welcome back to Al's Kitchen. Back with another video, back with another banger. This week I'm cooking Indian restaurant style chicken korma. Now, chicken korma is not known for its complex, deep, diverse flavors. It's a mild one, good for the children. Lots of ladies like it in the restaurants. I like it too, lovely with chips. Reminds me of those bird's eye curries, the ball in the bag. Don't want to insult my curries though, it's 10 times better than those ones. Like one of those ball in the bags, you're watching the TV, you've got your chips, you've got your rice, and it's just like a, a lovely all out dunking chip affair. But if you like rice, eat rice. Um, so this week is gonna be an Indian restaurant uh, version of chicken korma. And you're gonna see that it's really simple to do and really quick to knock out. Not a lot of ingredients in this, but the ingredients you use must be proper. Talking a proper, drinking a proper beer. I'm drinking a 5.5 Cornish Indian Pale Ale and it's a proper job. Now, I've been getting some uh, messages saying, oh wow, you've uh, gone to the sponsorship. The beer companies are sponsoring you. Not true, I'm not sponsored by anyone, any company. My shame. I'm just showing you what I'm drinking just to let you know no more than that, not trying for anything, just enjoy beer. I can assure you if I was sponsored by a beer company, it'd be a, a lot fatter than I am. Anyway, so on that note, cheers. So let's start with the ingredients. So what you're gonna need is a small piece of cinnamon, just about an inch in length, and one bay leaf. Right, these are optional, but um, to add tiny morsels of sweetness, I've got 15 grams of sultanas there. And here I've got three tablespoons of coconut milk powder. Now the thing with the Indian restaurant kormas, they don't use desiccated coconut. You can't use desiccated coconut. If you use desiccated coconut, you're gonna have a mouthful of grit because it doesn't dissolve and it's just all furry and uh, gritty. So what they use is this. It's coconut milk powder. Let me show the camera. It's coconut milk powder. And what this milk powder does is obviously it's sweet, it tastes of coconut and it dissolves in the gravy, giving you love, that lovely British Indian restaurant flavor that you're used to when you go out for a curry. So you have to use this, not coconut flour, although some have used coconut flour with sugar, um, but this is the one you need, coconut milk powder mix. So three tablespoons of that. And uh, I've got here one tablespoon of garlic ginger paste. Here I've got a pinch of salt. And here I have half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. This is gonna give the uh, korma that lovely yellow glow that you're so used to. Here I have a teaspoon of almond powder. And here I have half a teaspoon of owl's mix powder. If you haven't used owl's mix powder, what are you waiting for? Go and make yourself some. Uh, the recipe I'll leave in the link below. I did it in the summer. Basically, this is Indian restaurant curry powder. It's what gives the curries that unique Indian restaurant flavor. Something that you can't really mimic just by making it up yourself. Um, as a shortcut, you can use um, mild madras curry powder and it will do a good job. So if you've got mild madras curry powder, you could use half a teaspoon of that. But I highly recommend you use half a teaspoon of Owl's Mix powder. And here I have a teaspoon of sugar, and we're gonna use a tablespoon of honey. The reason I'm opting for honey is because it's healthier, the body breaks it down differently, treats it very different to refined sugars. Right, I think that's it, apart from the chicken. I've got about eight, nine small cubes of pre-cooked chicken. Now this is just plain chicken, all I've done is boil it. And the reason I've boiled it is because when you boil chicken, it's really tender. Um, you don't have to do that. I've been doing that and been achieving great results. It's all going to be served in this lovely uh, karai. It's all copper. And if you want to know where I get these from, just check the description below and I'll provide you a link where you can buy these from. It's all going to be cooked in a nice nine incher. This is a nine inch aluminium frying pan. Go and buy yourself one. Get your missus to buy you one. I'll leave a link in the description box below show you where you can buy these. Um, aluminium conducts heat, it allows the base gravy that we're gonna to use to burn and stick, to caramelize, creating more sweetness, more authentic British Indian style flavors, and uh, you can't really do this in a non-stick pan. People do, but they're always 30% short of what the curry should be, so I would recommend getting yourself an aluminium pan. Um, that's about it, so let's crack on with the curry. 
Right, so let's get started. So we want to put this on a low flame. And uh, we're going to put your oil in. I'm just using vegetable oil. You can use other oils, mustard oil, uh, coconut oil. Now I'm just putting enough oil in to cover the inner circle, the inner part of the frying pan. And we don't want this to get too hot. And the reason we don't want it to get too hot is because the coconut milk powder will burn. So we're just going to put the cinnamon stick in and the bay leaf. I'm just going to extract some of the flavours out of those. I did a korma a few years ago, it's really popular, I think it's had around 90,000 hits. Um, this one's going to be slightly better and hopefully this video will be more easier to follow and understand. Plus I'm going to leave all the ingredients in a list below in this video which I didn't do uh, with the previous one. You had to watch all these little funny speech bubbles open up. So let's celebrate curry eating with a drink. Look at the colour of that, isn't that beautiful? Nice. Really citrusy and fruity this one. Okay, so we're going to leave those in there anyway. And the first ingredient that goes in is the ginger garlic. I think for those of you that have been following me for a while, you'll see a similar process in cooking and building the curries. And practice makes perfect, you know, you'll get better at it. So we'll literally just fry this off for around 20 seconds. Please make sure it doesn't burn. You know, it's game over if anything burns. Well, very quickly, we're going to put in the coconut milk powder, the mixed powder, and the turmeric powder. And I'm going to add in one ladle of base gravy, otherwise it's all just going to go all, um, into lumps. So just stir that out. And there's your korma base there. Already it's looking like what you would see in an Indian restaurant. Obviously we're going to build it a little more. I'm using the back of the spoon here so as not to create scrapes. I get a lot of complaints about the scraping. That's it, just keep turning it, get those lumps out. If you've got kids and uh, you don't want to give your kids uh, hot chilies and spicy curries, um, this is probably the best curry to start your kids off on. What you don't want is your kids growing up hating curry. It's going to make Friday and Saturday nights horrible. You know, curry for the parents, chicken nuggets for the kids, boring. Get them on curry at an early age. You know, indoctrinate all the way. Right, so that's that. So we've cooked that out. Right, so I'm going to add now the almond powder. Keep stirring it. Touch more base gravy. Unlike um, previous uh, BIR curries, where when I'm cooking them, basically the heat's higher, there's a lot more sizzle and burn. Just be careful with the, uh, with the colmas because it's a thick, creamy curry. You don't want to uh, overdo it. So, I mean, look at that, look at the glaze and sheen on that. It's already looking really nice. Okay, so turn that in so it doesn't stick around the edges. Just lightly take that off the bottom. That's it. Right, so now I'm going to add in uh, the sugar, the sultanas. The sultanas are um, optional by the way. If you don't like them, just leave them out. And a touch more base gravy. Loosen it down a little. Mix that through. I mean, this is just looking so golden and delicious, isn't it? Do you remember Golden Delicious Crisp? Right, and to sweeten it some further with some natural goodness, I'm going to put in a, tea, a tablespoon of honey to dip it in. 
that's it. In that goes. And for those that are health conscious, I mean, why'd you make this a hobby, really? Come on. This is indulgent food. You know, Weight Watchers and BIR curries don't really go together most of the time. Although, you know, you can like uh, swap things up, try and make them as healthy as possible, use less oil. Don't go for the fatty dairy curries like this. Okay, so that's nicely melded in. Right, what have we got left? Right, to give it some of that calmer body that you get in a restaurant, I've got 100 ml of single cream. You can use double, but I find when I use double, it gets a little bit too thick. So we don't want it to split, so I've turned it on a low heat, and um, I'm just gonna bring the heat out a little bit and pour that in. There you go, that's looking lovely. I mean, for all you guys and girls that like hot curries, please give this a go. It's just a, a good dish, you know, it's a, lovely, it's a lovely dinner. So we're gonna bring the heat through that. And I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of natural yogurt. Approximate measurement. Turn that in. Now all I'm gonna do with this is just reduce it down and thicken it a little. To the desired consistency. Yeah, so I've had a little break, I've had a little summer break. Um, I think I've had about four weeks break. In that time my dog died, 13 and a half years, chocolate lab, old age, arthritis. So that's hit me a bit. Missing him, my baby. And uh, yeah, so I've enjoyed a bit of a summer break. But I'm back with another curry, back with another banger. Right, so let's put the chicken in. Like I said, pre-cooked chicken. Throw that in. I mean, it's looking really nice. Right, let's heat that through and simmer that down a little bit. Turn that in. All that's left is the pinch of salt. That's there, that's ready to plate up. Oh, here we go, let's plate this corner up, look at that. That's a beautiful, beautiful colour, isn't it? Lovely, lovely gravy. You can take the cinnamon stick out or leave Leave it in and the bay leaf. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Silky, sweet, coconutty. Let's not waste any of this gravy. That is amazing. Right, so you can put some dried flaked almonds in this. I haven't got any, but I've got a little pinch of saffron for that extra little bit of decadence to make it just a little cut above the rest. And, uh, why not? Let's treat yourself, eh? And there you go, one beautiful Owl's Kitchen Cheating Coma. And now it's time for the taste test. Look at that, look at that. That turned up on your table in a restaurant, would you turn it away? I don't think so. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Absolutely amazing. Nice and mild, but you can taste the spices that are in the mixed powder. It's sumptuous, it's delicious, it's decadent, it's soft, it's creamy, it's mild. All the words I can think to describe this lovely coma. Anyway, I think that's my job done for another episode of Owl's Kitchen. If you haven't subscribed already and you're new to the channel, please press subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this content and you want to see more. Leave a comment in the description box below. Check out all the links to utensils that I use and so on. And I'll see you next time on Owl's Kitchen.